So welcome back friends. As promised, uh, I told you guys that I would uh, show you how to make the, uh, the Woodsman's Crayons here. These are uh, a, a nice little simple project that any one of you can do. You don't need to have any special skills. You don't need any special tools, shop or anything like that. All you need is a saw, uh, a sharp knife, some crayons and, and maybe a drill. So you can see here I've got a red one and a blue one and they're just made out of a simple branch. Uh, that you can find probably on your property or go out to the forest to find one. We went out here to the uh, to the east stand. We'll pick out a couple of limbs. We'll take them back in the shop and I'll show you how to how to put these together. So what we're looking for is something that's it's going to be about the diameter of a quarter. Uh, take a quarter with you and that's just about right, about an inch or so. And uh, probably a, a broad leaf over a deciduous over a conifer because the bark is a little bit smoother and it seems to hang on there a little bit better. So uh, I got a little overkill with my saw here. Jack's taking a liking to my small silky and he's always got, he's got it out there using it. So we'll just uh, make do here. So we'll take this vine maple. Oh, that's a good, vine maple's really good. If you got maple, broadleaf maple, that's about as uh, all you could hope for there. That's a, a tough wood. Easy to work with. There we go. So how much do you need? Well, you need, you know, about the length of a crayon. You don't need a little bit longer than that, maybe five, five inches or so, however you want to do it. And you're not bound by that size. You can go bigger, you can go smaller, but I think this size looks really good. It kind of gives it a nice heft and I think it's just about ideal. So you can see here that we got, we got about the right size there. That's probably pretty close. So let's take it in the shop and we'll, uh, we'll put a couple of them together. So after you cut your branch, we're gonna, you're gonna want your crayons. Just any Crayola will work. I think that they're all the generic size. These are just uh, Sergeant Art, made in the USA. Who knew? I gotta stick with your primary colors, you know, kind of your reds and your greens and orange. We'll do a, let's do a red and a green. What do you think? No, maybe a purple, orange? What do you think? Let's do white. No, black. Oh, I can't decide. Let's go, I don't want, no. Why am I having so much heart trouble with this? Yellow, red and yellow, that's what we're gonna, <laughs> that's what... <laughs> my poor wife. <laughs> red and yellow. Once you finally pick your colors here, we're gonna take, uh, just take and we'll cut that paper off of there. We're gonna go with the red one here. We've got the yellow one cut off. Cut the paper off our crayons. Now, we're gonna cut these in half. Cut these guys in, in half. You should be able to do that with your knife. They, they're, they cut pretty simple. Just roll it, score it like that until you get through. Get as clean a cut as you can. And there's a reason for this here. Right there, okay. And the reason is, is that, yeah, you can shove the whole crayon in, but it looks much cooler when you have, well, that's not focused there, is it? Looks much cooler when you have the, the, the blue end or the red or the yellow in both. You want that. It looks like it goes all the way through even though it doesn't, but it just gives that illusion. That makes it more, I think it makes it more special. Now, crayon diameter. Any guesses what a crayon diameter is? I'll tell you. It's 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths drill bit. That's a pretty standard size. It's the exact size of a crayon. And what you're going to drill, do, is, is you're going to take and drill the ends there, like I already did with this one here, both ends. And just go a little bit deeper than, than the depth length of that crayon there. If you go over is, is, is fine, doesn't make any difference, because we're going to glue these in, just kind of estimate. So I got this one done, so we'll drill the other one together. Once you get your branch in, you're going to want to cut these to length, and the length on these will be six and a half inches. So somewhere at or near six and a half inches seems to be just about right. They look, look kind of nice. And we'll cut these in. If you're asking, are these Woodsman's crayons going to be included in the Common Man's Toolkit? Well, of course they are. Of course they are. Now, once you get that, if you have a little bit of moss or lica, like this here on your Woodsman crayon, just take a little piece of just fine sandpaper. We're not getting too carried away. We just want to get that loose stuff off so it doesn't make a mess. And, just a little bit cleaner. Now the 5 16 drill bit, we'll drill one with uh, 
power drill. We'll drill the second one with a bit and brace if that's what you're going to use, but just line that up on the center the best you can. And hold it as straight as you can. Try not to oval out the hole. Now we're using green wood and it's only going to get tighter, so that's just fine. It'll hold it in there just fine, but just try to line that up both sides and, and get a good start. Whoops, that's not a very good start. Don't chuck your drill up. So maple's hard. So a lot of you have been asking when we're going to get back to the uh, poor man's carpenter bench. Uh, very soon, actually, I got the next tool uh, to add to it. It just it came in while we were in Boston, and it's a. I'm real happy with it. It's a brace. Let's see, five sixteenths. It's the brace um, that will go with the the used bits and I found a good one. It's made in England and it's very affordable. Um, it, they're not easy to find. There's only a handful of companies that still make them. So many of them are very poor quality. This one seems to be really good. So that will be coming up on the next part. So now we'll do the other side with the, the old way. Oh, that maple's hard. Vine maple is hard stuff. You see that the old bit, the Irwin bit, it cleans itself perfectly. I don't have to put it in and, and out. Just quality those. There, it's more than deep enough. Better hole too. So now we're ready to fit our crayons in. We're just gonna use a little glue. Just use any glue you have, it doesn't matter. Just, if you got Elmer's, that's fine. If you got tight bond, that's fine. Doesn't make any difference. Again, as that wood dries, it will, so help kind of feel the, get, feel the gap. It will, uh, it's gonna tighten down on there and it's, it's gonna get, it'll be nice and Nice and snug. We'll just push that flush right there. Again, I get carried away with my glue. I got enough for all of them right there. To me, you know, the th this would just make a just the neatest little gift. One of those is tighter. The one that's tighter is the the bracing bit. It's mu it's it's. I wonder if it's more precise or what, but it's certainly tighter. I hadn't ever, ever used one before, see if I can. So if you use it, oh, okay, that's all right. Well, lesson learned, it's not gonna be as far in as I wanted, but that's okay. We can just, uh, we can just trim that. I find that very interesting that the old drill bit is so much tighter than the new one. Okay, there's our, we don't want to lose track there. There's our red and there's our yellow. Oh, those are seem to be going in. It's definitely tighter. We'll put a little glue on there. I think with the Irwin bit, you really wouldn't even need any glue. It's so tight. We'll put this guy down in there. We can leave that point sticking up there just like that. How are you going to fit there? Yep, it's just a perfect fit. That's interesting. I don't even need glue. The glue, it, the tolerance is so tight that the glue made it thicker, so thick. It was the difference. The thickness of the glue made it break. There you go. Okay. All right, let's wipe the glue off and then we'll finish it up. Now put your Woodsman's crayon back in the vise and, and use your saw. Something if you fine tooth saw, we're just gonna just take a little bit off of there. You, no matter how hard you try, you never get that that quite flush where it looks right. This is the end that we're not gonna sharpen. And uh, by recutting that, I smeared a little red on there, but we can sand that off. Uh, you get you get that nice look on there. Doesn't that look cool? Now to finish our woodsman crayons off, best best tool is a knife. A uh, heavy, a heavy knife to do this. The the facets on it. I'm going to use my prettiest knife I ever had. Made by this knife is handmade by John Deering, 
for me a couple years ago and I'll tell you it's one of the it's one of my prized prized possessions I've used it a lot okay so important things is to get the look right on these and it's to you want to you want those facets see how those are just facet those nice clean cuts like that this was cut on drier wood it's going to be a little bit more challenging the wood I chose is a little bit on the big side a little on the chunky side uh, but we can still get the same thing and how we get those facets is um, is we want it those six about six sides or so so rotate your knife kind of, don't worry about breaking that off we're not going to use that and kind of establish those where those facets are going to be this is a powerful cut cut like this with your using your thumbs on the back of the spine of the knife you can do a lot of work and when you come back around you should kind of line up like that that kind of gets you started and then back those up a little bit and just keep working those those angles and backing them back we want it to look like a like a pencil is how a pencil is sharpened from the factory but but on a bigger scale it's a, it's a good cut right there I, was, I think there's a there's always a name for all these things I don't know what the name of that cut is but it's a you can get a lot of power with it what a nice gift these would be wouldn't they for uh, I mean, for anyone, for um, Christmas gifts, you could do a little, make a little box or buy a box or a basket and, you know, make a set of these, you know, buy a, maybe buy a small set of those crayons where you get like eight colors and uh, do a whole set of these. People wouldn't know how to say, how do you do that? I'd say it'd be scratch, it'd be a head scratcher, I think, for a lot of people. All right, we're coming down there. Keeping those, see that scalloped deal we have going on? It's little things are important. Little things are really important. Okay, so start getting to that crayon, lighten up a little bit. We don't want to break it off. I like this so far. Now when you get to this portion here, now you can start working closer to the tip of your knife. There, are we focused? I'm sorry if I'm out of focus there. You get a little more control here with the tip of your knife. We don't want to, we want to put less pressure on that. We don't want to break that crayon too much. We're just working that wood away. Like that. Much tighter tolerance on the brace the bit, the old bit, the Irwin, than on the, the newer bit. I know I'm a, I'm a homer for those old things, but it really is better. Right there. And then we'll just take that last little bit we'll just take in. We can have that last little bit. We want that round. It's like that. There you go. There's your woodsman marker. You can take a little sandpaper if we still have it there. Wouldn't hurt to let this dry a little bit, cut your branches ahead of time, but it won't hurt. It don't hurt anything. But uh, yeah, that will clean up when it dries off a little bit. But those are, that's it. That's all there is to it. And uh, you can make those yourself real simple. You don't need much and see how much, what it, how much nicer it looks to have those in the back makes all the difference to me right there but there you go there's your woodsman markers woodsman's woodsman's crayons